Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome back to Taito Ecology. Now a lot has changed in our grasslands biome since the last time we visited it. The game actually had a pretty significant update this past Friday. The first thing you'll probably notice is that we are no longer confined to our Owlbot. In fact, the Owlbot is no more. The developers have completely reworked the camera mechanics into what they call the God Mode camera. And basically what that means is that we just have a lot more control over where we want to be and what we want to see. We can scroll in and out we can turn all around and uh, I really like it. It feels a lot smoother than the previous camera was. The only problem I have is once we get into these slightly more populated areas, I have some trouble turning the camera in the direction I want it to be. I'm sure that's just a, a strange little glitch that they'll be fixing very soon though. Honestly, it's just uh, really nice to see when developers are invested in keeping their game updated and fresh and I'm glad that they're trying new things. The controls are basically the same too. Um, the only major differences are that you can use the Q and E keys to go up <laughs> and go down. And if you want to take a screenshot, then you can press the G key on your keyboard. Screenshots are also no longer saved in your photos folder on your computer, but in your Steam library. So if you're looking for those, don't panic, they're still there. Actually, I really like how close you can get into your animals now with the up and down keys. It really helps when you're trying to take just that perfect picture in your grasslands here. We could take a picture of this little baby fox. This is actually a baby fox. He's eight weeks old and it is adorable, isn't it? <laughs> I love this guy so much. I'm so happy. This is the first time actually that any of our, um, our predators have reproduced. So we have two baby foxes here. There's one and there's two. They're both eight weeks old and they are adorable. I've actually fiddled around with uh, quite a few other things in the biome too, especially in zone four. So if I can just slowly turn the camera here <laughs> and then I will zoom out a little bit too so we can see it properly because I have been working on the area where we placed our pack of wolves. I decided to uh, kind of grow a little forest over here with our lovely cedar trees. We have a nice miniature forest for our wolves to roam around in and they seem to like it so far. They seem to be very happy up here in their forest. <laughs> There's two of them right now. I believe we still have a pack of six of our wolves and I have been trying very hard to uh, make sure that they have enough food to eat but it looks like I may need to place down a little bit more. So um, we'll do that right away. Actually, this is a good time to uh, take note of another little change in the game. They've added these buffs to some of the creatures. I've noticed a few unique icons so far, like um, our badger here has uh, two buffs on him. Basically, these little green icons show that this consumer can eat tough life forms and he can also eat poisonous and venomous life forms, which is very important because um, if we go into our producers tab, for example, and we find our common milkweed, we can see that it's considered a poisonous plant, so it can only be eaten by certain marked consumers in um, our consumers tab. Basically, we would want to find a consumer with one of these little green, um, <laughs> it looks like a poison symbol next to its name. So that adds a new layer of complications to the game, I guess, when you're trying to figure out how to properly balance your biome. If we go all the way to the jackrabbit, we can see that this guy can actually eat uh, life forms that are considered tough. Though I don't believe any of the plants in the grasslands are under that category, so that's not something that we need to worry about at the moment. I would imagine once we go into the desert, it might be um, very helpful to have jackrabbits around that can eat the hardier plants there. And I see the wolves came running as soon as we put those jackrabbits down. Oh my goodness, they must have been very, very hungry. <laughs> Another little glitch I've noticed is that the biodex, uh, the biodex button here does not seem to be working properly, but I'm sure, again, that's something that they will fix as soon as they possibly can. I would also like to add some of our antelopes back in because unfortunately they all passed away in uh, the time that has passed since we last visited our biome. So let's put another group of pronghorn antelope down here and then we can zoom in and look at them because I love these guys. They have this adorable little prance when they walk. We can get really close, of course, right down to their level too. Oops, there's uh, an antelope butt. <laughs> let's watch them across the little stream here. Unfortunately, the animals still walk right on top of the water, <laughs> but I'm sure eventually they'll be able to fix that as well. Actually, I had quite a bit of trouble with the deer mice in our earlier biomes. Of course, in the last episode, you probably remember that they were slowly spreading out and taking over zone one and zone two. And um, at the moment, it seems like they're okay. I added quite a few more predators in here for them. So 
I was hoping that their population would slowly chip away and I, I feel like uh, it may have worked. When I came in here last time, I found that they had literally eaten a giant hole out of all of this grass that I have here. Um, it was actually in zone one where it was a very, very big problem. I'm just going to check and see if it still is. It doesn't look like it. I actually added this tree here because there was such a big gap of uh, nothing, really. The deer mice were slowly destroying our biome blade by blade, but it seems like we may have controlled them. It looks like um, there's only two deer mice here and 16 juveniles. There's four there and there's seven there. So, okay, I think we finally have our deer mouse population under control. Oh wait, there's one little guy poking out there, uh, but he's not too bad either. That's actually a very manageable population. So I am very glad to see that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was getting so worried for a while there because uh, they were just completely destroying the place. But I'm guessing our snakes uh, really helped keep them in check. And of course this game is all about balance. So I am so glad that we finally found the correct balance for them. It seems like uh, they might be having some trouble though. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but this little uh, hazard sign here, or caution sign, kind of shows which animals are having trouble at the moment, which ones need your attention. So this guy is apparently on low population at the moment, so that's why they want us to uh, check him out. And of course, our jackrabbits too are always having trouble in zone one because the foxes are so very greedy. <laughs> Even more so now because they have little babies to take care of. I have noticed that in general, the animals seem to require more to sustain themselves now, especially the herbivores. If you are starting a new biome, then I highly recommend that you fill it to the brim with your producers first. Don't put any consumers in before you are sure that you're ready because they will eat all of your plants within seconds. <laughs> it's a definitely a little bit more intense than it was before. But again, it's just about finding that right balance and now we need to uh, strike a new balance that coincides with the new update. A brand new feature that they've added to the game is the ability to skip ahead in time while you're in the game itself. If you click on this little plus sign down here right under all of your tabs, then it'll open uh, this which allows you to spend your title coins on time skip options. So you can either fast forward one week into the future, one month or three months. So if you're feeling brave, <laughs> you won't need Need to wait for your deer mice to completely consume your biome, you can just uh, fast forward time and uh, watch them explode, I guess. <laughs> Unless you're smarter than me anyway. I know uh, I was a bit silly placing so many deer mice in the area without something to keep them in check, but now we know better. We are not going to completely flood our land with deer mice anymore. We are much smarter than that. Visually, they have um, updated the sky with this new beautiful painted texture, which um. If I fast forward the time here, you'll be able to see it slowly fade from night to day. And it gives the world just them um, a little bit more of a natural feel, I guess, as the days progress. Let's see, there we go. The sun is slowly rising on the horizon and eventually this will all turn blue and you'll see the big puffy white clouds and it just adds that extra little touch to the game that I am really, really fond of. We don't really spend a lot of time looking um, straight up in our biome, but if we ever do, then uh, that would be something nice to look at. One last pretty exciting thing the developers have uh, teased is that they're going to be releasing their very first DLC biome expansion, I believe it was called, and they'll be giving us some more details on that on Monday. And while we don't know too much yet, I'm uh, pretty excited to see what that's going to be. I mean, I realize we haven't even left our grasslands yet, but I personally would love to see them add some more locations to the game. I mean, could you imagine just roaming through an African savanna or something with big lions and zebras and elephants? And oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. And I know I've said this in a previous episode, but I would love to see them maybe add some birds to the biome too, especially with this lovely new texture. That would be nice to look up and see birds soaring through the clouds. And um, I think I am going to end out the episode by coming back over to Zone 4 and adding some more grass into our lovely little forest over here because it looks very, very sparse at the moment compared to the rest of our biome. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little update video. I know some of you are playing along with us, so I would love to hear your opinions on this update. And in the next episode, we will certainly be continuing our efforts to unlock the rest of the biome and hopefully add our lovely little bison in as well. That is going to be very interesting, especially with all of the changes 
in the way that the game works. So thank you guys so much for watching today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!